Gorp. We're at Gorp and it's now 30. And um, I'm glad you're here. So am I. My name is Josh. Gorp today, it stands for Garfield, Oliver and Company, Rugrats, and Pokemon. What are they? What are all these things, Brooke? Sounds like animated TV shows to me. Wow, that's correct. Because today we're talking about animation. And um, <laughs> it's a big topic that we're going to squeeze into a uh, about an hour or so. I don't know. Uh, like, like I said, I'm I'm Josh. I almost said Fry, and uh, Brooke is here. Say hi, Fry. Hey there, and uh, I think you guys we agreed because this is a topic where we go on forever. We're gonna try a little something new. Ooh, Ooh. all right. Are we okay with it? I think so. Uh, Brooke gave me a nod, and Josh said, "Ooh." Like- so I think that's a yes. So-, <laughs> so today we're gonna play a game called Who's Got the Nuts? All right. That means each one of us is going to take our shot between 90 seconds to two minutes to explain our stance on the topic, and then we'll all vote or choose. We may not have to vote. We, it may you be unanimous. We may be like, all right, that's it. Brooke took it, right? Right away. Uh-huh. Yeah. And at the end of the show, whoever has the most points will get a prize, and the audience will never get to know what that prize was. Well, uh, that sounds okay to me, I suppose. Um, so we have about a minute and a half or so to uh, just – Speak our, uh, we're not necessarily in competition. It's like really just who's got the best contribution. contribution? Oh, no, this is a competition. Right? This oh, is it's definitely competition. competition. Okay. So I'm pulling it Only out. Only um, losers say it's not a competition. No one's going to be competing <laughs> after this. Uh, the, the thing we're drawing from today is a DVD copy of uh, My Neighbor Totoro. I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but uh, you're dumb if you haven't. Uh, it's a wonderful Miyazaki film uh, brought to America by oh, my lights awful brought to America by Disney, but it's um, Studio Ghibli that made it one of the most prolific, probably the most prolific animation studio to exist. But um, that's not negotiable. Anyway, here we go. The first topic <laughs> for the DVD box. Josh decides he wins round one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I won. Next. Um, the topic is. This is weird. So we're talking about animation throughout um, your experience in life uh, that kind of creeped you out, maybe. Maybe it scared you. Mm-hmm. Or uh, mm-hmm. this is just, like, too weird for me to keep watching. Uh, just a quick throw-out example, salad fingers. Oh. Mm. Uh, let's say uh, to start off the timer and the uh, battle rap session we're about to do, you have to rhyme. Just kidding. We're going to go oh. with Fry since it was his idea. Ding, ding. Oh, we're going to start with me. Okay. And... Uh, so I'm going to go here with Jessica Rabbit and how Jessica Rabbit intermingled with Roger Rabbit, right? Because he was a bunny and she was kind of like a human creature. And now as an adult, I'm thinking to myself, wait, they were doing it? And then also in my head, I'm like, hold on a second. Is animation weird? Should I be getting weird feelings about animation? Right? Because Jessica Rabbit did have it going on by all accounts. And that's really my argument is this is getting weird. Did they do a full animation, a full cartoon about a rabbit trying to hook up with a cartoon, beautiful, like smoke show of a woman? Whoa. Okay. That's an interesting take. You're only at 42 seconds. You got more time if you want to do something different. Oh, if I want to knock this one out of the park? Are you going to keep going with this one or do something? All right, uh, here. Different? I want you to I'm going to tell you, Disney made this movie, and then they built a ride out of it with no sense of self-awareness that, hey, we're teaching a bunch of children that it's okay to be furries. Wow. Can you imagine? Not like, that there's anything that, wrong with furries. Disney would have nothing to do with this movie. If it we don't kink shame here, okay? <laughs> no kink shame. I had, to, I, had to, I, had to, like, I had to censor, like, go back and be like, <laughs> what is that banner? There's nothing wrong with furries. That's on okay, CNN now. You're at it. Hey, that was okay. all right. That was all right. Um, sounds good to me. Okay. Um, Brooke, you want well, to go? Well, it or? sounds so good to you. Where'd you go next? Oh, 
Okay, this is weird. <laughs> weird. I'll tell you about what's weird, but I'm going to come from a different angle than Fry, although I do like your angle. And using your angle, I'm going to start with one um, a touche moment. Well, I'm going to say, that's cool, and you're right about Roger Rabbit and Jessica Rabbit. However, remember Cool World starring Brad Pat? Um, they leaned all the way into it. It was extremely overtly sexual. Like, <laughs> <laughs> whoa this is creepy my dad took me to that i was about seven so that's weird but mm -hmm. also going my other way is uh when things are weird in a scary way i remember there was an episode of gumby where they went to a different planet and they heard a uh, piano bing, 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 like a really cool masterful orchestrated piano and they walk around the planet because it's so small and there's a, a little boy playing piano and then gumby said that's really like good and then he stops and he turns around and he said you ruined it and teeth and then claymation and he's and then gumby said let's get out of here or maybe that was eeyore whatever is the, the other name pokey um also creepy uh and winnie the pooh speaking of eeyore the uh, mm. elephant song, have for lumps and woozles, oh, baby. That, you know, that, oh my goodness. Secret of Nim. What about that one? I'm going to take them all so Brooke has nothing to say. Um, shoot. Uh, ah, no, I'm out. 15 seconds. That was good enough. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think we should dock Josh a point for confusing Winnie the Pooh with Gumby. I think that should be a thing. Because <laughs> he definitely oh, called. Okay, but if he lost his. Watches... <laughs> It washes because I said cool world and that slam dunks on your point. So it's a wash. Well, also, before you said, uh, you literally were like, I'm going to go in a different direction than Fry did, and I'm going to use his point. And I was like, wait. Wait, <laughs> like, wait a second. What? How is that? I sat down and I overcome. I sat down, I overcome. I'm going to go in a different direction, and I'm going to take his point. Okay, it's my turn now. Um. I'm going to take you guys on a little quest here. Uh, I thought it was weird. Have you guys ever seen the movie The Rescuers? Yes. Yeah, Rescuers from Under. Um, this is the one where it's the little girl and she gets abducted and she's got the diamonds or whatever. The, the lady that abducted her and the way that she pulled her eyelashes off, that was weird for me. Like, that lady gave me big creeps when I was young. Like it, I was like, I don't like that person. I don't know who mm -hmm. she is, but I hate her. Yeah. That's, that's why this is weird. Okay. Just like that. Just that one sequence. That's all I have. Creepy. That's all you have. So what about in the rescuers? You're talking about the one with the mice, right? Yeah. So did you guys know as they're speeding through the tunnel on like that little thing? And when you remember the mice are in the pipe and they're like going on like a contraption, it might be the rescuers down yep. under there. There's people banging. There's shadows of people banging in the background of that. No. So if you pause it just right, you see people having sex. Oh. I feel like that's also weird. They, stuff that, that got snuck into that's Disney weird. stuff. Whether it was yeah. true or not, most of it was true. Well, they they go back and they scrub it. Remember, they edit their stuff. Like well, Disney edits stuff. Wait, of I have ten seconds. Stuff. I'm also gonna add how all the Disney princesses are like thirteen when they find their love of their lives and it's not okay yes. for that to happen. That's correct. Like, like historically, Pocahontas was thirteen. <laughs> yeah. Which is John. Wall, she's not a princess, Josh. She's a Disney princess. I mean, Get with the times. Yeah, she is. Is, is she? Yeah. Of, are you serious? She's a female lead in a Disney cartoon. That she's a Disney princess. A princess. Absolutely, it does. Princess. That's how it goes. It doesn't matter that you're well, like in No, because Belle's not a princess until she marries the beast. Yes, she is. She's a Disney princess. She's a princess. It's a it's like like a diva category. Like you are the ones that are in like Mulan is a Disney princess, even though she's I think just a of them are royalty though, right? Because doesn't she yeah, marry the doesn't the Mulan end up marrying the Emperor's son, which makes her a princess? The idea is that they all marry into royalty somehow. That's the except idea. for Elsa. No, 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 except no, no. For Elsa. If, like, no, Alice in Wonderland she, is a Disney princess. That's they're in the category yeah, she's of not. Disney princess. She's just Alice. Listen, I'm telling I you this about the marketing of Disney. They're not princesses in their story, but they're in the Disney Sleeping Beauty, vibe, Belle, like, yep, Sleeping Beauty, Belle, Cinderella. Uh, these are your oh, Princess Leia. These are your mm -hmm. princesses, actual princesses. Deadpool you're right. you're, you're just talking princess, about characters. Dude. Oh my god, you're, you're so wrong. You're so wrong. 
I'm yeah. I'm right right now. Grow up, bro. You're, right. You're wrong, dude. Uh, I'm telling you, like, okay. dude, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a long conversation about this, and it's gonna make you angry after this after this. I'm not podcast. gonna I'm... vote for myself on this. I'm just gonna not vote for Fry. That's all okay. I, I vote for Brooke. <laughs> All right, so Brooke, I, you get I have to be an ice. Time. <laughs> Fry is iced out. Because <laughs> we just all of a sudden Wonderland's a kingdom, and we forgot about the Queen of Hearts that exists there. It no relation to Alice. Okay. No, I think here we go. Your terminology. You don't understand the terminology. Like I don't think you understand make, how Disney works. When they make, listen, no, listen. When they make a princess, a Disney princess video game, right? Let's pretend they make one of those. Are you telling me Pocahontas is not going to be in it in the Disney Princess Avengers? She's not a Disney movie? princess. I'm telling you right now. You shut your dirty okay. whore mouth, Fry. I can't wait to show you so many websites, dude. Like she's I a can't Disney wait princess. To just, you take that back. I'm you Pocahontas is a okay. princess. You want me to screw your guys' minds right now? Google who the tallest Disney character is. Anyway, uh, moving on. Okay, Brooke wins this one based on it's her Anna. She's a Disney princess evolution now we're talking about evolution and this is like just the idea of um animation how it has come from the beginnings to today and uh your thoughts on it brooke has the option of going first or nominating and, i'm gonna um, nominate josh oh dang okay are we ready okay Bing. my thoughts on animation and how it's come from now until beyond and before in any order you want. That was weird. Um, I was gonna say, is there a I'm, I'm really impressed with it. I, I, I like animation's always been a big part of my life. Like ever since I was a kid, I saw the cartoons and I'm like, that's what I want to do or comic books or I just want to draw. Like it, it really inspired me to draw from a very early age. Um, I love everything about it. I went to school to learn how to do it and I failed. But anyway, um, it's just really cool to think like, we had those caves in France with the cave drawings and they're so old and like you light a campfire and it makes them kind of move with like a trick of the mind. And, um, that's the earliest animation. Then we go further on and it, we've gone from flip books to Nickelodeon television things. And then actual Nickelodeon on the cable box, like it's two different things. Look it up. Jerk. Um, now we're getting into like, um, CG stuff and intermingling stuff. And uh, I think animation is one of the most pure forms of art, and I can't wait to see what happens next. 15 seconds, done. I'm going to go next. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I'm kind of going to piggyback off of what Josh said. Piggyback. But I would like to say I think it's interesting how we've gone from documenting history on, like, cave walls to we now live in such an animated world. Like, people mm -hmm. actually only exist on an animated level, almost, mm -hmm. with, like, virtual reality and games and um, a ways Avatars. of life. Yeah. It's, yes, um, avatars. We've, we've gone from using animation as a way to document history and kind of, I don't know, show proof that we exist to no longer existing in this actual physical realm and using animation only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did I describe that? Well, anyway, I just think that's interesting. Yeah, that's all. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. How much time did you have left? You have 30 seconds? Um, I can't count. Well, I think you're, you're touching on, like, that's what everyone has in their mind. That's what everyone tries to uh, invoke in some way. And then as history has developed, we've made it easier and easier. So just so uh, anyone can, like, portray themselves almost entirely as an avatar. And we're getting to where yeah. that, that will be the exclusive for a long time or whatever. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it my turn? No, we're skipping you. That's um, the end. No, go ahead. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go on a different journey. If we're <gasps> ready, Brooke, you gotta tell me when it's time to go. Ready, set, go. All right, so the journey I wanna take you guys on is the risque culture of cartoons, right? If you Ooh. think all the way back, uh, at least to my childhood, in the 90s, my parents wouldn't let us watch The Simpsons or like Ren and Stimpy because they mm -hmm. felt like it was like too, too fringe, too risky, like you're gonna pick up bad ideas, you know, things like that. 
And you fast forward to now when we have shows like Big Mouth that are cartoons on Netflix and Family Guy on television and American Dad, where they like outright say like vagina and (laughs) things like and show aliens having sex with like real humans in different cartoons or kids. And Big Mouth is literally just a cartoon about kids exploring their sexuality and growing up, which is wild to me as someone that that was not allowed to watch Simpsons because it's risque. And I yeah. kind of looked into this and I looked in and it led me down a rabbit hole with Korea because uh, a lot of the characters in Korean uh, anime are women and they're scantily clad women, right? With like hardly any clothes. And a lot of that a journalist found was due to repression. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so they had uh, they had to uh, uh, they had oppressed sexual feelings and they took it out on their art, which created a drawing. And this actually led to taking all of these drawings, all of these animes, and then people start taking the next level. And then we end up in a world where animation becomes pornographic. And now it's one of the most famous forms of pornography. So that's That's how animation has evolved in my eyes in a different way. Mm. I like that. And I think your point there goes into Brooke's point also about like, there are Korean pop stars that are holograms. Like that's that's (laughs) real. That's true. Like, you go to a concert and it's a Korean person that's doing motion yeah. capture, and on the screen it's a it's a scantily clad woman and singing her songs and stuff and blah blah blah. Yeah, um, that's very yeah. interesting. I mean, they had that. Burning Man on a virtual level last yep. year, the year before. Like you could mm-hmm. go into different rooms with people and their avatars and hang out. Like it's wild. that's wild. Wild, yeah. and then there's that concert. Kid Cuddy had with um, the other guy, they were on Fortnite having a concert. So everyone logged into Fortnite, went to this concert, and they were there performing. Travis Barker, is that right? Travis Scott. Yeah. Well, Travis Scott's the rapper. Travis Barker's the drummer. Yes, Travis Scott and Kid Cuddy did that concert, and they were like portrayed as giants, holographic giants roaming around this this whole arena of people. Yeah, that's, ooh, we that's cool. But I like- I can't really get into it. Try. I think it's cool, man. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Josh. I apologize. No, no, you're right, though. That, I mean, maybe we can't quite get into it yet, but I think there's going to be a point where most of the planet is really cool with it because they, mm-hmm. they've upgraded production and they've made it more comfortable and easy to access. It's going to be what's happening. Like, you're going to go see- uh, I don't know why Dave Matthews band popped in my head. You're going to go see someone in concert, but you're going to be sitting in your house, but you're going to be moving around. You're going to have joysticks and it's going to be a real experience. That's like the brain waves are going to go. And that's all animation. Joysticks. Just evolved so heavy. It's going to be like ready player one, you know? Yeah. 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 What were you going to say? Anyway, I was right um, about- oh, you were mm-hmm. right about, uh, wait, what were you saying when we were, Oh, not being allowed to watch stuff. I couldn't watch Beavis and Butthead oh, unless yeah. I was at Dad's house. Yeah. Um, but as yeah. soon as I said, that sucks, <laughs> uh, my dad, like, stopped and he said, you will never say sucks ever again or I will beat you to death. <laughs> and uh, so he already saw the influence of animation, like, instantly. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a big part of our culture. And, like, I was only allowed to watch Simpsons during the Halloween special because it was the special event. Which is the worst time to watch Halloween, or I'm sorry, Simpsons. It's like they get really extreme, but you know, yeah. obviously, it's nothing compared to today. Yeah. Um, so uh, if we're gonna go to like who won, Fry wins this round. What do you say? Fry wins. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. Oh, thank you. Can't wait till I get <laughs> a piece of the biscuit. Um, a piece moving of on. The biscuit. Um, mingling, mingle, mingling. So like a. Uh, Roger Rabbit's avatars, oh, yeah. um, where you uh, mix animation with CG, like they did in Beauty and the Beast, right back in the day. You know, they they mix. You're mixing media, whether it's live people or animation with computers or uh, static objects with moving frames. Like, there's so many examples of this. But uh, what are your thoughts on the mingle? Fry gets the uh, choice. Let's go ahead with Brooke. All right. I think one of the best depictions of mingling in between animation and live actors, I guess, is Mm -hmm. Space Jam. It has to be Space Space Jam. Jam. Michael Jordan, 
the the first Space Jam. I haven't seen the second one. I probably will never see it. No, Who either. cares? Whatever. LeBron, you guys know there's one with uh, Brendan Fraser too. I forgot to start the timer anyway. So <laughs> Space Jam. I mean, it's a it's a classic, and it's something that I think as a child it was such a a big thing for us to have such a huge athlete be in a movie like that that was also yeah. animated for children. Yeah. 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 I can't really think deal. of anything that I mean I love Avatar. Avatar is great as well, but the new one it's it's like all animated. It's not even mingled mm-hmm. anymore, you know. So, yeah, Space Jam. Space Jam. <laughs> uh, I'm with you just because as a child I, I've mentioned it before, but I've I watched Space Jam relentlessly for about a year. Relentlessly. Drove everyone crazy. I couldn't get over it. I don't know why uh, but uh, the technology of the animation was really impressive. Uh, the the motion capture, whatever they did uh, back then, I don't know what the process was, but it was really impressive to me as a young lad. Also, basketball cool, you know, Team USA. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. And with that, I think they depicted games. those um, the aliens or the monsters mm-hmm. really monsters. well. Monsters. Like you didn't want to like them, but you did like them. Yeah, they had personalities and stuff, and they interacted. Uh, yeah. They, they allowed the Looney Tune characters to do their thing, like when uh, D- Daffy did the gut check time, you know? <laughs> and then Bill Murray comes in there for no reason, just right. running it. Yeah. yeah. And I forget that one guy's name that was in Jurassic Park. The guy from, no, he's from Seinfeld. I lied. Oh, oh yeah, oh, I know what you're talking about. I know. Newman. I know I'm fat, but. Newman. I'm slow. Newman. <laughs> It's one of the best lines in the whole movie. <laughs> okay, who goes next? <laughs> Is it me? It's uh, your know. pick. You can go last if you want. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Uh, so I think uh, when you're ready, Brooke, go ahead. So yeah, Tom and Jerry actually just recently tried this again, right? Uh, Ooh. And yeah, you had Tom and Jerry running around Manhattan. And they did like a big, like at the end, it was a big Indian style, Eastern Indian style wedding. And there was a lot of animated mm-hmm. characters in that East, uh, Eastern Indian style wedding, like animated elephants. And they're riding animated elephants and stuff like that at the end. Yeah. Uh, I found like, I think it's kind of cool that we're going in that direction. I know that the movie was panned because it wasn't a great movie, but it was interesting to see how they're trying to do this. Right. Because you had, you know, literally the cat, the characters were animated, Tom and Jerry. And that was cool to watch them interacting with humans. And then that's akin to Garfield, right? With Jennifer Love Hewitt and Brecken Meyer. Only Garfield was animated in that. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting to watch because the humans are interacting with this fake cat. And you know, it's like tennis balls on a stick or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's it's crazy where we're going to take it. We already did Cool. We already did Roger Rabbit. But one to keep in mind is we talked about Space Jam, but Looney Tunes back in action with Jenna Ooh, Elfman yeah. and Brendan Fraser, right? Mm. Terrible movie, but they're interacting and it's like goes into the real world, out of the real world. Even like Brandon Fraser and Jenna Elfman go into an animated world where they're in an animated yep. jungle. With uh, And then Steve Martin's the villain in that. So how can you go wrong when you're mixing all of these great actors with Bugs Bunny and Daffy yep. Duck? Yep. Time. Dang. Good points. <laughs> Good points all around. Oh, go ahead, bro. Whenever you're ready. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, I'm ready. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go a little broader and just kind of like throw out the hits or the uh, misses, perhaps. You know, like, uh, remember Mortal Kombat, the live action film where they had Reptile? Yeah. And perhaps yeah. at the time you're like, whoa, what is that thing? And like nowadays you look at it like this is a joke. Like not even a college student would produce something like that. It's bad. Um, so look, thinking of all the bad stuff that went down throughout history, but it, in the end, like it just helped improve the game. Like they had this horror, uh, I'm sorry, not horror, I guess a monstrous thriller. They had like this, uh, the thing, it wasn't the thing. Anyway, you only actually saw the monster for two seconds of the movie because it was so bad, but it was just what enough movie? to show you the monster. I, I wouldn't even begin. Don't take my time. Uh, reclaiming my oh, time. Sorry. Um, uh, Oh, no, I'm lost. Okay. Bring it back. Uh, shoot. <laughs> the, the bad Damn animation it. that made the good Bad-animation. stuff good. 
Yeah, the good stuff. The good. Bad okay, stuff so good? what about like No Whammies, No Whammies, that theme, that uh, game show? No Whammies, and they had the yeah. cartoon animal come in and like take your points. Like that was tragically bad, but like it added to it. Like it, what I love about animation is it's, it's so many failures over and over and over that might work for the time, but they always add to now we have Avatar. Like, not that Avatar is a great movie, but the CG is incredible. Oh, last thing, Dragonheart, Sean Connery, and uh, uh, Quaid. You're not a real okay. man, I'm a dragon. <laughs> well, before we pick a winner, we all failed critically based on a couple weeks ago, you guys did an episode on cereal, and we should have for mingling brought up cereal oh, characters. No. The Lucky Charms oh, Leprechaun, the Tricks Bunny, Tony the Tiger, Tony uh, the Tiger. Toucan Sam, Toucan I was Sam. Also gonna mention yeah. Ted. Ted, Ted yeah. the bear, yeah. Uh, I was I was thinking the critical failure for cereal because we just did that episode of Gorp two weeks we ago and they talked yeah. about the and that's like the perfect example Man. of mingling is those serial characters in those commercials with the kids. True. True. Well, so we all lost. Everyone go to bed. <clears throat> okay, good night. Uh, moving on, we're going to keep Fry as the lead since he uh, won last round. <laughs> the, new, the new topic is... Pretty. Uh, yes. So we're talking about a sequence or a whole okay. show or a movie. Just something that the animation was so good, it made you puke your pants. Josh, Nobody I feel needs- bad because you've gone middle or last, and I know that's a tough spot for someone. So why don't you lead us off this time and put Brooke and I in a bad position? Okay. Well, I'm going to take first then. Um, and whoever can go next, go next to start the class. Yeah. Let's talk about some cool animation uh, i'm gonna go real quick animatrix it wasn't even that great it had some cool concepts but a lot of the scenes in that were immaculate what about ghost in the shell let's get into some anime for a quick minute what about that studio ghibli they have almost no plot there's almost no character arcs there's no plot hooks mostly it's just this is what's happening and they show you and like the animation of showing someone cooking, it's like five minutes of footage, and they're just cooking, but it's so well animated, it just makes you drop your jaw, and you almost get a tear to your <laughs> eye. How beautiful it is they put into the care of showing someone having care about cooking. That's some good animation that I, even now I'm talking about it like 20 years later. Incredible. Disney does it with the dance sequences, the uh, the the... the the fight scenes they do when Mulan, when all the Mongols come down the hill. Remember that stuff? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Then you have fight scenes. We're Roni Kenshin when he fights Saito. If you know, you know. Anyway, Street Fighter, uh, the movie, the TV show was terrible. And that's a whoa, dude. Opposite. Like, wow, that was bad. And that's pretty cool, too, dude. I'm out. <laughs> All right. I like, I like the it. Lots just... of anime, lots of fight scenes. Yeah. You can see where Josh's childhood was impacted by whoa, dude, cool scenes. It was always like crazy fight scenes, it sounds like. Like the massive like Ooh, fight scenes, army start, scenes. Most of, most of them talk about cooking. Like the care that people put into the, like frame by frame. Every frame <laughs> is a painting. It's so good. Man, <laughs> I'm a geek. I go ahead, it. Brooke. I'll go last. Pretty AF. I was really in love with the movie A Bug's Life Mm -hmm. and just how they kind of made the perspective of a bug like a reality for me when I was a kid because I that was just mind-blowing to me. Changed the Um, game. It really did. It it showed me that just because I'm living this life doesn't mean that other lives aren't happening at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which was kind of like a big shift of perspective for a child um i think now looking back on all the disney movies i hate that they're a thing uh just because of the long lasting impression that i've gotten as a woman to only be good for being saved by some male character so that i can be Mm. a wife and have children Mm. that's kind of a shitty thing, so it's not pretty AF. Not Elsa. Uh, 
Uh, well, not Mulan. This is my time. This is my time. We <laughs> can't <laughs> <laughs> my time. Um, lastly, I would like to say Avatar. Wow, the second movie. I I know that there's a big comp. Just not a lot of people like the movie, but it was so mesmerizing. Wow, yeah. mesmerizing. That's all. I she got. Uh, stuck the landing on the wow. She went wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to keep mine in one area. So I think it's really cool what animation is doing with CGI uh, and the intermingling like we were talking about earlier. But I do kind of feel like it's killed uh, acting and animatronics and like the old hanging the planets and everything. So I want to keep it concise and bring it to an animation that really intrigues me. I love watching it. And it's an anthology series called Love, Death, Robots. And you can find it on Netflix. Yeah, nice. and I'm obsessed with it. It has everything you could want. There's episodes that are anime, and I don't even like anime. I'm going to be honest. But they, the, the way that Love, Death, Robots does it, I'm actually into it, right? Then you have the mm. computer-enhanced graphic animation, right? Like your wall style animation. And then they have this almost new yeah, style yeah. of anime that combines the computer graphics with anime, right? So you kind of have the squared characters that look kind of buff, but it's still yeah. anime. But it's computer-generated. Yeah. Yep. And then they'll have your straight cartoon episode, right? That's just straight cartoons. And then they'll have intermingling. One of my favorite episodes is the intermingling episode where uh, Topher Grace is actually in it, uh, that 70s show, Topher Grace. And he opens his freezer and discovers there's a whole world in his freezer. And they're, it ages throughout time rapidly. And every time they open their freezer, they're in a new era. Uh, my mm. other favorite episode is obviously the very first episode, the pilot with the fighting aliens right? Where each one is its own entity and they control these monsters. Uh, but yeah, nice. if you want a little bit of everything, Love, Death, Robots will really get you Love into Death the animation robots. world. It's really great. It takes off like not even missing a step with what the concept <laughs> of the Animatrix was. And they do whatever they want with a really small like set of rules. Like make it weird and futuristic kind of if you want. Mm-hmm. It's so good. And it's, it's really cool. Yeah. I mentioned it before in another show, maybe, but um, when you receive it on Netflix or whatever, the episode order is different every time for any yeah. user uh, because it doesn't matter, but it all kind of fits in the same world if it wants to. It, it's just beautiful. There's comedy elements. There's horror elements. Yeah. So so you guys watch, love. Have you guys seen the newest season, uh, the season three of Love, Death, Robots? No. No, no. Oh, you guys got to check it out. There's this, like, amazing episode that takes place during the uh, uh, Conquistador raids. And, like, mm. there's this beautiful, like, sea goddess that's covered in jewels. And that episode's just phenomenal. It's amazing. And then there's another mm-hmm. episode about an alien, uh, pardon me, us on an alien planet. And it's the animation will blow your mind in this episode because, essentially, it's her losing oxygen. So she's getting high from oxygen oh. deprivation. And she just starts seeing colors and things like that. And it's just, it's a wild episode. And the animation's beautiful, mm. but it's like cartoon slash anime style. It's amazing. Very cool. Who wins? Probably not me. I say not me. I no, guess. He's, no, I won this I time. I say so. I'm voting for Josh. Josh wins. <laughs> Josh Josh Ooh, wins. Right. He, took it, he took initiative. <laughs> he, asked, right. he asked for the sale. <laughs> I also want to just mention briefly before we start the next topic, the Midnight Gospel and the animation oh. in that show. I love yeah. And, and it's a it's a wonderful. collaboration of a podcast and animation. Yeah. So I really yeah. like that. And what about um that reminds me, I mean not even close, but it just for, for some reason reminds me of like um you guys heard of the exquisite corpse concept? It's like an art no. exercise. So the idea is like I draw the head and then we pass the paper. Everyone rotates past the paper. And then now you draw the torso and then pass the paper. And now we have all this body, this exquisite corpse in different designs all yes. the way down. The internet has taken it so far. Like they made the entirety of Shrek where everyone gets seven seconds of film. And it's like you claymation, then the next seven seconds is someone drawing it in their style, and then the next seven seconds is some kids like filming it live action in their backyard. 
with really bad budgets. Like it's it's check it out. Like literally, can I watch that somewhere? Where can we? It's on YouTube. Just, you you gotta see it. You gotta yeah. see it. It's Shrek Exquisite Corpse. I'm sure it's um or Shrek fan made, maybe. Um, but it's it's incredible. And then more than one film has been done this way. But Shrek is a really famous one, of course. I love it's, Shrek so much. It's so so good. And seeing everyone's different styles and how they add to it. Sometimes it's cardboard cutouts. There's it every seven seconds or whatever it changes. It's beautiful. Uh, I love that. In the, yeah, I, I I can't stop talking about it. It's so good, dude. I'm not gonna lie. The second you said claymation, my brain went to like an old Sega Genesis video game called Clay Fighters, and I couldn't get it out Clay of my Fighters. head. Clay Fighters the second, is so good. I'm a second you said it. I'm a huge proponent of Claymation coming back. I think Claymation yeah. always has a home in my heart. It's so mm -hmm. good. Uh, every oh, well, wait, till, of uh, wait till this next episode of um, Popcorn and Beers that should air this week. Mm. Because I watched the new Pinocchio that's Claymation and stop motion animation. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> nice. That's what's Kid up. Cuddy, his, his uh, movie that he did, wasn't that kind of... Was it Clay? I've always wanted to watch yeah. that. Is there claymation in that? I think so. Stop motion, at least, right? It's it's Stop a very interesting counts. animation. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah. Maybe they Check took the Spider-Man across the universe vibe and like played with that because that's very yeah. It's not claymation, but the stop motion aspect of the frame rate. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that counts. All that is so good. Oh, speaking of Spider-Man across the multiverse or Spider-Verse. Part wow. two is coming out. Part two is coming out, and it looks amazing. Very I think we got time for yeah, two more topics. Beer, what, no, what do you guys two say? More topics. Two more topics. Those okay. Companies. Picking the big one. Did we decide what happened? Let's just say Brooke took it. Brooke has the title this time. So do you want? No, we voted on Josh. Oh, we voted on Josh. So we're going to talk about some animes. Okay, we've we've dipped Amen. into this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go last and vote for Rook. As first, to go first. Okay, to go first. Hey yo, hey, hey yo. Uh, Um, I suck. Wow. <laughs> 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 um, no, uh, I think Pokemon classifies as an anime. It yeah. does. That's probably the one that I have the most experience with. Um, I watched Pokemon a ton growing up and I collected cards, whatnot. I did watch Kiki's Delivery Service. <gasps> yeah, Studio Ghibli. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I loved that movie. It was a movie, right? I think. Yes. No, that was a movie. That was a movie. It was actually up Major. for, I think that one even got nominated for an Oscar. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. And yeah. I, I literally just watched it like this last year is the first time okay. that I heard of it. Um, and I had a black cat at one point. So it was like really kind of, it hit home for me. Yeah. That's all I really have. I'm so sorry that I'm a terrible person and can't talk more about anime. There's um, nothing else to be ashamed. There's nothing to be sad about. <laughs> What about There's Sailor Moon? Have you ever watched that? Here's my foot. <laughs> there is everything to be sad about. <laughs> yep. She's <laughs> trying to use her feet to get votes. The audience can't score this, Brooke. I am on Feet Finder. <laughs> <laughs> Come find me. Hashtag Brooker loves. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a bunch of feet. <laughs> just, wait. Who wants to pay for my pedicure this week? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no shame in the game. It's all money, baby. Yeah. yeah, I'll put my feet in chili if I have to. Throw some money I'll, this way. I'll put it in something. Josh what? is like, who wants to see me step on these grapes? <laughs> and this little piggy went to Chile. <laughs> Josh is like ten dollars extra. I'll do it in my kilt. <laughs> no kilt, mandatory. I'm, I'm kilt guy. Six nine, six nine. <laughs> Four twenty six nine. <laughs> uh, cool. So let's just preeminently say Brooke won this one. Uh, okay, Friday. goodbye. Okay, uh, my relationship with anime has been really bitter because I just can't get into it, and it's just because I'm a child of. 
90s uh, Saturday morning cartoons. And I think I just got really used to that style in Disney movie cartoons mm. that it was really hard for me to get attached to anime. Like I couldn't get into it. Plus I can't, so I don't know, like it takes a special type of person to relate to those stories. And I just never could relate to the Dragon Ball Z's. And I know Josh, you can give me a whole rundown on why it's relatable to me. And I'm sure you're right. It's just when I'm in that moment and watching it, I just, I'm sure. like, I, it's not for me. I don't get it. Um, no. I did almost get into Dragon Ball Z because my buddy, he, we did sleepovers a lot as kids and I had a buddy that was super into it and he had the Dragon Ball Z video game on PlayStation 2. And yeah. like when I like something, I do become like obsessive. Like I have to beat it. Like I get weird. And uh, mm-hmm. we stayed up all night just, and I learned like characters like Vegeta, Hercule, uh, Goku, Super Saiyan guy with a guy with like the, the super helmet thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Piccolo. That was my favorite, right? Because you could just, you could Piccolo's go up to people and go, you could go, Piccolo. And like shake your face. <laughs> and I, love, I just love that name, Piccolo. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I hated Hercule because I had like a Jerry Curl going on. And everyone mm-hmm. said I look like Hercule without the beard. And I hated it. I hated mm-hmm. it so much. <laughs> Um, but I, tr- I even tried to do the things like Alita Battle Angel, right. and I couldn't get into it. That's cool. That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> I, think, I think what you're trying, uh, something about what you're saying, Fry, is like, it, it helped, animation has helped me express feelings in a way, because I'm, I'm seeing feelings or seeing things that I've never experienced before, that now mm-hmm. I know, like, wait, maybe that's what I, maybe I do need to yell and s- shake my mm-hmm. face to get whatever out yeah. you know yeah yeah know. you know what i'm mad about brooke that you just like accidentally reminded me of when you said scream and trying to get my feelings out is i'm really mad for intermingling i didn't talk about lizzie mcguire more oh i'm yeah. so pissed at myself because that was her feelings <laughs> remember her little cartoon character was her feelings and what she really wanted mm-hmm. to say stomping around and stuff that was a great episode Absolutely. yeah thank I'm you for that, that reminder here's my yeah. kiss <laughs> All right, anime expert Josh. Oh yeah, expert. Expert. Um, uh, I say this mode. as an expert, but uh, I got I got into it as a young child. So so I understand where you're coming from, Fry and Brooke. I think the main thing is just like the window wasn't open for you properly as a young kid to get the influence. Perhaps, perhaps. Um, I I got it quick. Um. We saw some Dragon Balls. Maybe that wasn't the... No, the first one wasn't even Dragon Ball. It was like Thundercats was a anime-inspired American cartoon. So the, the vibe of anime was very young when I was a kid. Voltron, that sort of thing. Same thing. Um, that's anime-inspired. Transformers, I guess. Transformers, definitely. Um, but then you get into, like, Dragon Ball stuff. And, like, now I'm seeing, like, storylines I haven't seen before in American cartoons. We got American cartoons where, like, it's just like, now let's go find the bad guys. And they shoot the laser guns and blah, blah, blah. Even X Men, well, X Men, I'll leave out of it because X Men's great. But uh, you see these, these <laughs> crazy things. And then my, my brother was very much into it. So he got on internet stuff and, like, went on black market sites and found fan subbed. VHS tapes of like imported illegally animes. And so like we're committing felonies as kids pirating videos um, wow. and watching these stories that don't like how this would never exist in America. And we're like, how is this like almost everything that's on Toonami is um, an edited version of what we saw like five years prior. It, there's stories and themes and uh, animation styles that are far beyond where America was at the time, and that's why it's taken over, because in a lot of ways it's better. Not every way. I think what's funny, I'm going to vote for Josh, because he just knows more about that than I do. Yeah. Um, Josh and I used to get into big arguments about this, and I can't remember them all thoroughly, but as he was talking, I know, I actually recall, like, sufficiently with him being so adamant that anime is so much better, and I was like, I am just disagreeing with you, because all the best animations are cartoon animated and he's like oh so you like the dudes with four fingers on their hands and <laughs> flat faces <laughs> he would like to, you know how Brooke, you better have josh when he gets like super like oh so you like it like this <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, we've definitely had those conversations i'm glad you didn't go to x-men because x-men covered like civil rights issues x-men like, was incredible yeah x-men mixed was race mixed race couples 
like yeah. uh, minorities having power. Like, don't touch X Men. X Men. X Men. Yeah. Leave X Men alone. That's the best. Yeah. Maybe Batman. Batman and X Men, the best cartoons uh, for that genre. Dear America, your favorite X Man, your favorite, everyone's favorite, is Canadian. Deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I've yeah. never felt so insulted by a statement. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Last up, huh? Last, last one, up. last one. Emojis and gifts. Modern glyphs question mark? Or characters. Emojis and glyphs emojis or gifts. Just because we haven't really emojis. Copied, we haven't we haven't really uh, covered any of yeah. that. Yeah. Gifts. I'll start. Yeah. You know, you know. Ding, so ding, ding. I just think it's kind of interesting <laughs> that, we, <laughs> that we've gone from, like, our form of communication has gone from talking to calling people to now texting. And now we're just communicating straight up in, like, just flash frames of a show or an animation as, like, this is what I'm saying right now. Like mm -hmm. you have just Shaq, like doing something weird and that's how I'm texting. Yeah. I think that that concept is so, I love it so much because that's like how my brain works. Whenever anybody is like talking to me, I'm like picturing whatever you're saying in my own animated world up here. And mm -hmm. then like, I'm making a story off of that in the sidelines while you're still talking. That's just what's always happening up here. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a crazy place and I love it because my imagination is so wild. I would also like to say emojis. Um my one of my favorite emojis is the cowboy hat one. It's like a howdy. And then it's also I have one that's like a teary eyed <laughs> like, yeah. like thank you, but I also use mm -hmm. it as like not in a good way, like in a kind of naughty way. Um, and also I use the angel one, the one with the halo all the time when I say things that are like mischievous and I like being sarcastic about it. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> this has been Gorp. Uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> all right. You want to take it or uh, go less? Oh, uh, sure. Sure. Uh, why not? You go last so you can close us out. Mm -mm -mm. All right. I'm ready to go. Did I have my One, time two, three. Start? So I think the the raise in popularity when it comes to gifts and emojis, and it's just us, our culture, taking that saying "a picture is worth a thousand words" to the nth level, right? We're just basically maximizing that thought of, "Hey, I know I can say this with words, but a picture could say it so much better." And we've taken yeah. this to the level where we've taken a gift, like Brooke saying a gift, but here's the thing with that Shaq gift, you're also taking us back to a moment in time where we remember what Shaq did to cause that to happen. And it's the same yeah, thing yeah. with the movie gifts, right? So yeah. all that stuff is true. And then also uh, I think it's pushed us forward in a way to say, Hey, I don't want to be in this conversation anymore. Cause I know we've all yeah. done it where like you're trying to exit a conversation. So you're just like, yeah, thumbs up, thumbs up, 100, 100, yep. fire emoji, fire emoji, fire emoji. Like you're just Cat, like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're just trying to get out of here. But yeah, just uh, going back to my first point, I mean, we've created emojis that mean appendages at this point, right? Who would have thought an eggplant meant a penis? Yeah. No one, right? If yeah, you said, hey. All, like, everyone knew what it was immediately, though, as soon as it came. Like, everyone, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm taking okay. back my time. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so what's funny is picture going back into 1950 and telling your granddad, hey, pop, pop, in 2000, in about 70 years, your penis will be an eggplant. Play, play, stick. And just think about his <laughs> reaction. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, sir. Yeah, that was a round, round of applause. <laughs> That's cool. I do think That's that good. concept would be funny, though, if you start thinking about that. Like, if you go back and you tell Grandma, hey, Grandma, if you, it's in 50 years, if you get, like, a sprinkler water splashing, that means yeah. a man is, you know, ejaculating. No. That doesn't necessarily mean a man. Yeah, it's very true. <laughs> Let's just get Josh on for the 
next one. Here we go. <laughs> I know. And I, yeah, I, I, I don't really have anything profound to say here. I usually don't. But anyway, um, kind of piggybacking just on I like what you say about uh, like it brings you back to a time perhaps like with a good gif. You send someone a, a TV show moment and it like it. It, yeah, like you said, it, it encapsulates exactly what you want to say without having to say a damn word. And mm-hmm. it reminds me of, like, you look up words that don't exist in English, like uh, Valdansomkeit is the feeling you get when you're alone in the forest. And you can't say that. So that's an example of something that you could use another medium for. So, like, a gift, like you, you communicate a feeling, a vibe, an entire notion just with a stupid like 16 frame animated sequence and it's just mm-hmm. Dwight Schrute with a pumpkin on his head you know what I mean <laughs> incredible incredible yeah or a game over or whatever it is like you can do so much and then emojis you can have like 20 in a row and if it's someone that really knows you they know what that whole thing means and that's your that's what happened to you over a six hour cycle cycle <laughs> yeah um, you have palm tree and dookie and then eggplant and then eggplant dookie dookie. Oh, I ruined it. I'm sorry. A lot of dookie. <laughs> you really peed on the dookie. <laughs> I have not heard the word dookie in like so long. Surrendering my time. When I come around. Vote. That was on dookie, the album. I'm going to um, I'm gonna vote for myself. I'm sorry. For the first time yeah, ever. I say no. I say Fry and Brooke both uh, tie for um, similar and um, complimenting uh, notes to Brooke. I would like yeah. to say that Josh and Fry actually they tied for last. The, oh. well, hold on, actually, Fry got last. But, like, <laughs> point to Brooke. <laughs> Has anyone my point to, is anyone so, keeping track here? So Brooke. No. So Brooke now ends up with two. Josh ends up with two, and Fry ends up with one. Dang it. That, that's fake news, bro. Okay, I so will let's just go ahead and say Josh. that I won. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a pleasure. This is, I guess this is Gorp. I really like this new uh, format. Maybe we can sprinkle this in here and there. What do you guys think? Based on time and whatnot? I think we need to have the audience comment on it and let us know what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. Should we make any changes? Mm-hmm. Should Brooke just win every time? We should uh, add new <laughs> rules, revise it as we can. Uh, but, I'm just uh, going to make I like a hundred uh, different profiles and comment. Brooke wins. Brooke wins. Brooke wins. <laughs> Brooke wins. All the emails are Brooke Brooker loves two. one. Brooker loves two. Brooker loves three. Brooker loves four. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe there's some sort of like interjection. That'd be good if They're you had fans. like a. What did I say? Everyone, <laughs> everyone can pull a flag, and the flag is like, nope. I take thirty seconds of your time interrupting you. That'd be good. Maybe not. <laughs> anyway, um, this has been the Gorp Show. <laughs> you can find us at Gorp <laughs> Show when someone interrupts, like that. Flag. How ironic! Just like that. Where's exactly like how <laughs> that went? <laughs> yep. Throw it up. <laughs> Anyway, guys, let's just start this whole episode over. This was um, too many. I don't like being interrupted. I won't ever do it again. Just <laughs> kidding. Uh, this has been the Gorp Show. Um, you can find us on the Twitter. You can find us on the Sad Fan. One word on the YouTubes. Uh, also uh, at Gorp Show on Instagram. I'm Jr. Berkeley on Instagrams. I'm at Brooker Loves on the Talk and the Instagram. And you can find us at the Sad Fan Cast. Josh was saying goodbye, hey, so I'll say. Um, Bye, everyone.